If you take insulin to manage type 1 or type 2 diabetes, exercise can actually be one of the scariest things. Here's what you need to know on preventing low blood sugars if you take insulin. First, you've got to know what type of exercise you're doing. If you're doing aerobic exercise, that's going to drive your blood sugar down significantly faster than anaerobic exercise. Aerobic exercise is usually referred to as cardio. Walking, jogging, biking, dancing, gardening, vacuuming. These are all forms of aerobic exercise. In a nutshell, you know it's aerobic exercise if your heart rate is up and it stays up because you're continuing that activity for 5, 10, 15, 60 minutes. Anaerobic exercise is usually strength training, weightlifting, crossfit, spinning, sprinting. Anaerobic exercise is something that you can do in small bursts. You can't take a dumbbell and just pump it up and down for an hour straight. Instead, you're doing these small moments of intensity. Then you have to rest, even if it's only a minute or two of rest, and then you do it again. That's anaerobic exercise. The way these two types of exercise use glucose in your body are completely different. Anaerobic exercise can actually drive your blood sugar up. A lot of people think, oh, it's adrenaline, but mostly it's because when you are doing something like strength training or sprinting, you're doing that quick burst, your heart rate goes super high, and it's only that high for a minute or two, but it's so high that your body can't actually use the glucose in your bloodstream for fuel because it can't get oxygen to those cells quickly enough when your heart rate is that high. Instead, your body actually tells your liver and your muscles to release stored glucose. The way your muscles get fuel for that high intensity exercise is by converting lactic acid into glucose. And that glucose will raise your blood sugar if you have type 1 or type 2 diabetes and you're not taking extra insulin to go along with that extra glucose. That being said, your blood sugar can drop during anaerobic or aerobic exercise if you have too much insulin on board. Insulin on board is the next major thing that you need to know if you wanna prevent lows during exercise and you take insulin. Insulin on board simply means how much insulin is active in your system when you are exercising. That could be insulin from a basal rate in an insulin pump, could be insulin you took from a meal with an insulin pump or an injection, or it could be long-acting insulin that you took with an injection. Too much insulin during exercise drives your blood sugar down. Managing insulin on board by timing your workout based on how much and when you're gonna have the most insulin in your system is how you prevent lows during exercise without having to eat tons and tons of carbs. The main way that we're told to prevent lows at the doctor's office is to just eat food while we're exercising or before we start exercising. You should not have to do that anymore. I do not feed my workouts with extra food. Instead, I learn how to time my workouts based on my insulin on board. And I control my insulin on board by timing my workouts for when I know I'll have the least amount of insulin active in my system. For example, if you just ate lunch and you just took a big bolus of insulin for that lunch, when you add exercise to that mix, you now have the food you ate, the insulin you took, and then the exercise that's going to increase how quickly your cells take up the glucose from your meal. That means that you're gonna need less insulin. That means that your insulin is gonna have to do less work because the exercise is doing a lot of it for you by using up some of that glucose to perform during your jog, during your walk. There's actually a lot to learn on this topic, but I boiled it down to 100 pages in one of my books, Exercise with Type 1 Diabetes. You can get this on Amazon. There's a link in the notes below. One of the easiest ways to exercise without low blood sugars is to actually exercise before you eat. That way you don't have a big bolus of insulin on board in your system during your walk, during your jog, during your gardening session. For example, I walk my dog every day around one or two in the afternoon. I usually try to wait until after that walk to eat my lunch. That way I don't have to think about whether or not I'm gonna go low during the walk. The other trick though is that I have my basal insulin dose as low as it can be so that I don't have too much basal insulin on board. If you use a pump, you're gonna have to adjust your insulin doses in your basal rate. 
That means setting a temp basal rate before the walk, really for the hour before the walk, because the insulin you get from noon to one o'clock is really the insulin in your basal rate that's affecting your blood sugar starting at one o'clock because injected insulin is so slow. Learning how to set temp basal rates, we can't explain all of that in this video, but it depends on how intense the exercise is gonna be. If you're just going on a gentle walk, you might only need a 25% reduction in your basal rate for that one hour before your walk. If you're going on a jog, you might need a 50 or a 75% reduction in your basal rate before that walk. Everybody's a little different. You've got to approach it carefully, expecting to go low so you're always prepared with rapid acting glucose. And take good notes. Control as many variables as you can. Try to do it at the same time every day so that you can figure out, okay, when I go on a dog walk at one o'clock, this is what happens in my body. Once you understand that one o'clock workout, you can start applying that to the other times of day so that you have more flexibility in when you exercise. Preventing lows during exercise is complicated, but it really starts with understanding what type of exercise you're doing and then understanding insulin on board. We'll hit on this topic another time because there is way too much for just one video. In the meantime, take a look at how adding regular exercise to my life decreased my insulin needs by 66%. Exercise makes a difference.